My name is Gianni Russo, a.k.a. Carlo, the infamous son-in-law from The Godfather. I'm now known as the Hollywood Godfather, and this is my story. Before all of the wins in my portfolio, I was a little boy diagnosed with polio. Experimenting with cures, I tried every one. Felt everything in my right, but my left was numb. Walking with a limp, like will I ever run? Once again, or is this it? Am I forever done? Living in the hospital was never fun. Some people were cool, but not everyone. Welcome, everybody. It's time for another Hollywood Godfather podcast. And I'm really excited now because this Saturday night, I went out to see this woman in a club I used to play in. And But before we get into that, that's a whole funny story. I want to introduce our co-host, Jeannie Raymond, please. How are you? Hello. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for our guests for coming on. My my kids are big fans, and they're going to be so impressed with their mom because I got to meet you. So thank oh. you. And then the other guy on the show, the co-host out of Boston, he's called the Hollywood Kid. He's yeah. an officiary on Film, oh. old film, whatever. Oh, old stuff. All the old Hollywood stuff, not the new stuff. Wow. Yeah, I've done some acting in the background. I'm a background guy, and I did The Sopranos. I did The Sopranos. Well, that, that's who we got. I, now, yeah. I got cut out. I'm the cutout kid, too. The cutout kid, too. <laughs> the cutout kid. Let, let, let's, yeah. Without any further ado, that wonderful laugh that's so recognizable around the world, Catherine Reducci, how are you, my darling? I'm very good. Thank you for coming on. We're just Thank new you. friends. We, we yeah. met Saturday night for the first time. I've been a fan for many, many years. I've watched you so many times with our friend, mutual friend, Chaz Palminteri. And I literally went out Saturday night to find you. And as I was standing there, she came up to me. And said, what, what's Johnny Russo? What are you doing here? I said, I came to see you. Yeah, I got excited because I heard that you did the, um, by the way, we went to give them a plug. We were at the Columbus Heritage Foundation on uh, Columbus downtown. Citizen. Columbus, Columbus Citizen. Citizen Foundation. At, Columbus at, Citizen Foundation. On um, 69th Street. Yeah, 69th between, it's highfalutin. It's oh, between yeah. uh, Park and, uh, Ma Ma and uh, Fifth Madison Avenue. and Fifth. I'm glad you took an Uber, unless you would never got there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But okay. we, we we were both there, and I saw him walk in the room, and I was happy to see him because I'm going to Vegas on uh, April 17th, and I'm going to do the the uh, there's a the mob museum. museum there. Yeah, we're going to talk about all that. Well, we're talking about it now. Yeah, she's going to be, at, which is a funny story I told her. She's told me she's going to be at the Mob Museum. Now, the Mob Museum was created by the ex-mayor, Oscar Goodman, which I'll call him. Did you meet him yet? No. Okay. But you, should, you got to get to know this guy. He's such a character. He, he was a lawyer for Tony Spilatro. And he should have got disbarred, but he didn't. He became mayor. He was a mayor for eight years. Then his wife became the mayor of eight years. Now his daughter's the mayor. I can't believe what? it. What? I'm telling Only you. Only in Vegas. Only yeah. in Vegas, of course. But the interesting thing is he got the federal government to donate the federal building, the courthouse downtown. That's the mob museum. Wow. And now with me, from my history, I've been in Vegas since, since 1959 to 89, and how I was pleasantly asked to leave, I happened to kill a guy in my club. But So now they're inviting me after I wrote my book. No, true. Okay. Movie. I shot him between We'll just audience. gloss over that. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, now they invite me to launch my book there. So I said, I can't wait to go. I mean, everybody showed up. It was such a, a great night for me. And it was on a Thursday night, because I know that's when you're going to be there. And uh, I mean, who's who was there? And I said, what am I going to say when I walk on the stage 
because the stage is the original hearing room for the federal court. <laughs> wow. That's what makes it so interesting. So wow. I came out and I looked around the whole room and everybody was clapping. And I said, you know how long they've been trying to get me in this building? <laughs> you should have said, I take the fifth. I want a lawyer. Yeah, hello. No, no, I always do the same my thing. Lawyer. What's my lawyer? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine if it was a big sting and they did that whole setup just to get you there and they arrest you. We know you murdered that guy 20 years ago. No, I got I was I was tried and, and released in self-defense. As you they know. did that, they did that once to a bunch of con ex convicts they were looking for for the Super Bowl. They said, You guys are all going to the Super Bowl. They reached out to them. They had a big bus, they showed up, they put him in a bus, took him away. <laughs> I didn't hear that. It's a true story. No, really. <laughs> That's not nice. Yeah, they got him. That was years ago, though. Years ago, I remember. So, so when, when are you going to be here? I mentioned the date again, Catherine. When are you going to be? I'm I'm going to be there. I get there the seventeenth, but I do the um, Mom Museum. Uh, is had it's their first podcast. They just started a po a podcast, so I'm doing that on the eighteenth. Yeah, and then April eighteenth, I'll be there. So whoever's listening and is in Vegas, April 18th, come see me. No, I'm going to promote Catherine, it. I I, I'm dying there. to go there. Maybe I'll come meet you. Meet you in person. I'll She's tell you in about. Utah. She's in I'm Utah. in Utah. I'm very close. You can drive over. Close, yeah. Wow. And and Mike is in Boston, and I'm in New York. We do it this way. It's it's makes it interesting. Well, I cannot believe you got your last podcast. You got 4 million views. Yeah, I'll send you the stats. No, I don't send it. I, I'm just saying that's amazing. Yeah, no. I'm, well, we've been doing really well. <laughs> How long have you been doing it? Uh, three years. Oh, you're doing this three years. I thought this was new. This is the, no, first, I, this is the first show. <laughs> <laughs> we have 200, 257 shows. Oh, 257 oh wow. In 73 countries. Wow. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm I'm a veteran at this. <laughs> That's pretty good. We put a new show up every every Wednesday. And this show that you're on will be up April 3rd, which I'm really excited about. And I, I I'll do a commercial on it right now. Both of us, and I'm I'm arranging for you to have your booth next to me at PaisanoCon in Fairfield, New Jersey. What a name, PaisanCon. I love it though. They we had, we had Thriller. We it's got catchy. Well, it's paisans. Everybody's yeah. Italian. They got chefs coming, singing, coming. It's, it's not just the signature thing. It's a whole party for the weekend, and that's going to be on April thirteenth and fourteenth in Fairfield, New Jersey. Anybody who's listening, go to Paisan Con, buy tickets, and show up. The people that are showing up are going to be amazing, and. I'm, I'm arranging for you to be right next to my booth. We'll have some fun. Really? Of course. And I bring vodka. And, you know, I have vodka coming. I have wine companies. I bring all the stuff myself. I get about it. You have vodka too? My vodka right now, my vodka by November 22nd, 19th. My birthday. Really? Yeah. Wow. Another, that's Listen, another. I told you I'm the lucky stag. There you go. I love that. She's the best. So no, November 22nd, the Rob Report picks my vodka as the best vodka in the world. The who? The Rob, Rob. Report. What's it's that? It's one of the most prestigious reports to get anybody to do anything on. People follow it. And the Rob Report picked my vodka as the best Vodka in the world. Wait, now the Rob Report is that a um like for liquor? Like they they're like no no no, it's for anything. They 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 pick products and they do. Oh, tell us a little bit more, Mike. You know about the Rob Report? No, I don't. I just know how to spell it. I wrote B B. There's two B's. Oh, yeah. so no, the Rob Report is a, a major report. And I've heard, it. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's huge. But to get Did it, they asked. They asked yeah. you. They picked your vodka as the number one vodka in the world. And and they did it. They do it. Discretion. What's the name of it? 
<laughs> the Godfather, Corleone. It's got a beautiful bottle. Normally, I have a bottle in my backdrop, but uh, many, you know, have I, I, I hear about this vodka. I don't hear. I don't got nothing. Be, no bottles. If you go, time. Catherine, if you go to Corleone Fine Italian on your on on your website, you'll see the whole website. Okay. I, do I, have it. A, I have Clemenza sauce in the jar. <laughs> I, mean, I got everything in there. Wow. The Rob Report is an American English language luxury lifestyle magazine featuring products including automobiles, aviation, boating, real estate, and watches. It it's just it tells you all the best of the best. And they so, picked wow. me. Yeah. And they well. picked, yes. And because of that, my my vodka sales went through the room, the roof, and wow. uh, it's all good. But I'll get you all vodka. We'll all have vodka anyway. Wow. So let's talk about you, my darling. Your illustrious career of playing famous mothers and wives. And she has a new movie coming out in November by, by a, 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 an amazing director and uh, Barry and I were close many years ago. I was going to do a movie with him, Barry Levinson. We're talking really, about. we went back up. You see, November, a very lucky mm -hmm. month. I know, I know. Your book got picked in November. Um, my movie's coming out in November. Everything happens in November. Yeah, and, and can you tell us the name? Oh yeah, tell us the Hotel name. Hotel Nights. Hotel Nights. It was called Wise Guys, but then they changed it to Alto, A-L-T-O, and then K-N-I-G-H-T-S, Knights. Starring, Alto Knights. Robert, starring Robert De Niro. Nice. De Niro's playing two people in it. Amazing, amazing. He's playing he's Vito married. Genovese and, and Frank Costello. Yeah, he's married to me as... I'm Anna Genovese, and he's married to uh, when he plays Vito Genovese. He's married to me, and then when he's married, when he's Frank Costello, he's married to Deborah Messing. So I play Anna Genovese when De Niro's playing Vito Genovese. I play Anna, his wife Genovese, and when he's Frank Costello, um, that's Deborah Messing playing Frank Costello's wife, who is also De Niro. Right. And the, and the thing is, what's the title of it again now? Alto, Alto Nights. Alto Night. Uh, Nights. Alto. That was a club that they stayed in. Oh, nice. Oh. Right. The Alto Nights. Are there previews and stuff out? Can we, can you see previews of two at anywhere? No, I wish. No, no, no. no. But you know, I heard. Out to, they out to the theaters, right? Huh? It's going out to major theaters or Netflix. Oh yeah, it's going to be a huge Warner Brothers uh, film. It's it's Good. um the guy who took over Warner Brothers. This is like his baby, and like uh, when he took over, this was like the first big film that he took. So it's oh, going to be huge. I mean, I you know they want Bob to like get nominated for this role. He's like I, I really think that this he's. On his A game, I think he's absolutely phenomenal. I've, you know, I saw him in the scenes with me as Vito, but I also went to set when he was playing Frank Costello. It's, it's incredible to see. And they did the makeup. Um, I showed you, I showed you a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did the makeup. Um, they make him look completely. They transform him for for uh, Vito Genovese. I knew and, both of these guys. That's funny. In real yeah. life. <laughs> Well, yeah. see, see this apartment behind me. Yeah, this is Frank Costello's apartment. Un, freaking believable. <laughs> That's my dining room. It sits sixteen people. <laughs> Unbelievable! Really, I want to come there and take a tour. Please, yeah. be my pleasure. You, you live only. I want to see the artwork. Little, you, oh my God! It's, I got stuff. Forget about nobody else. I mean, I've been collecting for many, many years. And she's an artist too. I want all audiences to know. And uh, yeah. love, I love the story. A lady asked her Saturday night at the Columbus Citizens Club that they're going to do an art show, and we would like you to bring your collection to the show. But 
It's a family show, so you can't bring nudes. That's all she does. I no, no, not that. that, not that. No, that was another person at another gallery, not at the um, Columbus. Oh, oh I thought they asked you to do it there. No, I was. No, I was, no, at another, at another. She gallery, does nudes. I was going to tell her buy sweaters for all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy cutouts and stick them on their breasts. You should do that. That's right. Paper dolls. Do yeah, I think that'd be funny. You'll sell a lot of fun. things, <laughs> and then you can lift it. You can lift it <laughs> under their skirts. Oh. oh, that's crazy. So how long have you been painting, my darling? I'm painting since like uh, 92. Oh, okay. So it's new to you, basically. Yeah. I mean... Oh, no, it's 30 years. I'm well, sure. well, no. Listen, I'm doing it uh, the last... Um, since 2000, I want to say seven, I had a photography show in LA, a solo photography show. And then from there, which did well, I mean, really well. Um, but uh, then I started showing, having the nerve to like publicly show my art. And, um, and then I started getting in group shows and then I, I had a bunch of group shows and then I had couple of solo shows. I don't really push for the gallery stuff. Like the art is just for me and whatever happens and follows that while I'm just minding my business painting, mm -hmm. it happens. But from social media, for me, oh posting, God, yeah. you know, people want to buy the art. So I, I sell it. I sell it online. Mm -hmm. I don't have a website. I don't, Somebody DMs me, how much is it? I have a person who I say, go ask this person here, go DM this person, and I deal with that. But when I have shows, the galleries deal with it. Um, but I, I, the point is that I even have shows now because it's very um, scary to show your artwork when you first start doing it. And, and now I'm over it. Now I just, I'll paint live somewhere. But Why not? Yeah. this woman had asked me what I want to do an art show in her gallery. And I said, yes. And he's talking about a story I told him where I do a lot of abstract, but I do a lot of abstract figurative nudes. And they said, well, we don't know if the, it was a figurative show, group show. And they said, but do you have any, any figurative uh, art with clothes on? And that, we can't show the nudes. And I said, why? They said, well, kids might come in and right away I like, I was glad she even said that because that's not a gallery I want to be in. Art is art. You got to get it. Yeah, and take your kid to the Met. You'll have to put a blindfold on them. <laughs> to, a, to a grand what, museum that what, has... What is she blue, doing in front of the Statue of David? <laughs> have a heart attack. <laughs> it's amazing. But so, uh, you, I mean, you've done, you want to talk about her work, please. Bob. Yeah, I want to get into it. So a lot of people don't know your background. I mean, this is, I find this amazing about you. Your, one of your first acting job was The Bronx Tale. Yeah. Amazing. But how she got it is even a better story. Yeah, talk about how, how the process was like. Well, I was um, a closet case actress and uh, I was going on auditions and I wasn't telling anybody because anytime I would mention that I want to be an actor to anybody in, you know, in my world, it was like, what? You got two kids. What do you mean? You have to start when you get So I just decided to not talk about it and just do it on without telling anybody. I would buy backstage, go on open calls. And while I was at work, one of my coworkers that sat next to me, I was working at the Hunts Point Terminal Market. I would always make them laugh. I would do the craziest things in the office. I was always performing. So she said, you got to be an actress. You got to be an actress. She didn't even know that I was doing, like doing it behind closed doors. So she picks up the paper, the Daily News, and she says, look at this. Robert De Niro is looking for a nine-year-old to play his son in a movie uh, in his directorial debut. It's an open call. You should take your son. And I said, oh, yeah. My son, Nick, was like eight or nine back then. So I, I went home and uh, I asked my son, I said, do you want to audition for a movie? And he said, yes. I let him stay home from school to go audition. And we, we went to the theater. And while I was there, I noticed that 
he was the last little boy to go in that there was now an open call for the mother. That's all it said, the mother. You had signed in as the mother. And it didn't, I didn't know it was De Niro's wife or anything. And when my son came out, all these women were coming in and they walk like me, talk like me. And I'm like, oh, they were my age. And I said, can I read for the mother? And she said, the mother is not an open call. The mother is SAG. But if we don't find the SAG actress today, tomorrow it will become an open call. Then we're going to open it up. So call me in the morning and I'll let you know if we found the mother. So I, I did that. Me and my son went home and I called in the morning and she I said, hey, I was there. She said, come down. It's now an open call. You can come. And I went in. And I read, and I'm making this story is so amazing, but I went and I read, I'm going to make it really short, but I went and I read a couple of days later, two days later, I got a call. Hey, uh, De Niro saw, Bob saw your tape and wants you to come down. And I was like, who's Bob? And they're like, De Niro saw your, your audition and he wants you to come for a callback. I couldn't believe it. I went down um, and there were like 2,500 girls there. And I read, I finally got it. I was there for like four hours. I read, it was a crazy story what happened in that room. They were questioning me, are you sure you're not an actor? You're an actor, you must have, I was like, no, no, no. Okay, there's a possible chance you might come back. And when I left there, I knew I was coming back. I was like, they're, they're trying to downplay this, but I'm coming back. And I went home and that's when we had answering machines. By the time I got home, they said, hey, they want you to come back again, um, you know, whatever day. I went back. So I ended up, I went back like, I want to, without exaggerating, I want to say six times. Wow. And then finally I had a screen test and that's it. I got it. So that's how you got your sack? Yeah. Oh yeah, they, they have to give you the card. Amazing, amazing. She once, I, once I got an agent, you know, uh, a young agent came to the set and gave me his card. And he's like, I'd like to represent you. And I was like, oh. And so that's how it all started for me. But they it was have still to exhaust. The union makes them exhaust any SAG actress that's available. And then, then they could take an open call. And then automatically she gets a card. Because New York is a Taft Hartley act. Because when they when I got the part in The Godfather, I found that out myself. Because then they said, oh, he's not an actor. He can't be it. I said, let me just tell you something. I did my homework. This is a Taft Hartley act state. You give me a letter, I go down and I get it. Now, shut up. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I got Carlo. <laughs> wow. And here we are. Well, usually yeah, we are we're movie stars. When you're a non-union actor, you gotta get you gotta get your vouchers. You need to get three vouchers and then you get then you get in. That's now I, though. That's now yeah. they did that. They I mean, did, I, they did that when they merged AFTRA and SAG together. That's how they did that. But uh, not before. So, so, Catherine, I mean, this is a, I mean it's a funny story. So you do the Bronx Tale, you know, you're doing great. That, so you think, but you go back to waitressing. Go back to waitressing. Um, and, but I quit my day job. I don't go back to waitressing. I go back to the Bronx terminal market, which was a union job. And I quit that job. And I say, I know, you know, I could do this. I got the validation. I got the nerve up now to like, I'm going to do it. And I quit that job and I got a waitress job working, uh, nights so that I can go on auditions during the day. Wow. Like the rest of the actresses and actors in New York. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, nowadays you can drive Uber, you know, if you want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Amazing. film yourself on your phone in the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Self-tape. Amazing. So, uh, you know, look at the career you've had, though. Jesus, it's amazing. I mean, it's the irony of all ironies. I mean, Daniel was the guy who really hooks you up. He puts you in acting classes, right? Which yeah. Is, and you play his husband how many times? Three? His wife? Yeah, his, his wife. I'm sorry, the wife. The wife, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. I know what you meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you play his wife three times. Are we up to yeah. three? Amazing. 
Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. I'm blessed. I, I really am born born under a lucky star. And, and Bobby is such a great guy. Once he's your friend, he's your friend, man. Are you still close? Do you are you friendly with him? Oh my God, yeah. And we, we were doing a lot of things. We were developing a big project. In fact, we took his jet and went here and there. We it, it was insane because the guy he wanted to meet, he bought the rights to him, but never knew where he was. And he was in hiding for about 13 years. Nobody knew where he was. And I said, well, I, I, I talked to him on the phone, the phone all the time. He's what? I said, yeah. And you know who was with us was, um, oh, uh, oh, my God. Great, great screenwriter. He's doing uh, Tul Tulsa Kings right now. Oh. oh. Hello. Winter. Wasn't it winter? Winter. Yeah. Winter. Yeah. winter. The guy that yeah. did... Um... Jonathan, no, not Jonathan. Um, Terry? No. Terry. Terry. The writer? Yeah, Terry the Winter. Terry, 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 Terry Winter, Terry. yeah. He did Terry. Boardwalk Empire, he did all that. That's so, Terry Winter. Yeah. Terrence, so Terrence. Now, now, now the three of us, on, on a Sunday, we go to uh, um, the airport in New Jersey, the private one. We're on his jet, and... Uh, it's like six o'clock in the morning. I didn't go to bed. I just stayed up because I don't go to bed that early. <laughs> and, and we get on, on the plane, and I says, you got no service on this plane? He says, what are you talking about? I says, we, we're going to be flying for a couple hours. I said, well, I want a martini. I got a picture on my bar. When did you come here? I got a picture of Bobby making me martinis on his plane at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you can drink a martini at 6 a.m.? Yeah, I used to drink, drink about six or eight o'clock. Then I go to bed. I was up all night. I had a, I had a nightclub in Vegas for how many years? Wow. He didn't get up and have martini. He just was still on last night. Still up. Still up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we that? fly into Chicago because I didn't, I didn't, we, we, the pilot said, I got to give the tower where we're going. They got to know our route. I said, once we go to Chicago, we'll do that. We get to Chicago. When you see Bobby, tell me, you have to ask him about this. Say, Johnny told me you two guys went to Chicago. You didn't know it. The plane, when we landed, two police cars pull up. And they lower the stairs. He said, what's going on? I said, we're going to go see this guy. He's in Chicago. They thought he was in Sicily. He's been hiding in his sister's house in Chicago for 13 years. Wow. It's insane. So and and the and the, the Leiden Police Department in Leiden, Chicago, are, is on his payroll. So they pick us up, take us to a restaurant where he him and Terry Winters couldn't believe it. Because but you know, Bobby, he, we're only spending an hour or two. We gotta go, you know, we gotta go. He's always in a hurry. It was in the afternoon. He couldn't believe he's talking to this guy that he's going to play the character of. You know, that's what he loves. He yeah. studied that. But anyway, but uh, we never got to make the movie. And we did a couple of things we were trying to do. He played me, you know, Bobby. Bobby played Johnny Russo in a, in a movie. And he, he wore my wardrobe, my, my jacket pin, everything. The ties, the hairstyle. Everything about me. And I was on as a technical advisor, which I think is so funny. But no, I'm, I I love Bobby. I mean, I've been down, you know, his office a hundred times and all his detail that I know, you know, he gave the New York Police Department uh, rooms in that building. But uh, I, I I love him, but he's getting more difficult by the years. I, I, I felt bad for him last night. Because he was sitting there, and I know he didn't want to be there, especially when he didn't win anything. <laughs> he doesn't like being, you know, whatever. But. I thought he was terrific in that movie. I thought that movie was great. Oh, yeah. I thought he was really good in it, really different. He, I thought he was really good at it. And I, it thought, was I thought just because of that. About, I thought just because about the Indians, they would have won something. They won nothing. What was the movie? Uh, uh, Two Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah. Oh, my son's been asking me to come watch it with him for months. 
but I, um, I heard it's wonderful. Who won? Um, but didn't uh, what's her name win the girl? No, she won. oh, she won for supporting actor, yeah, yeah. What what Emma Stone won for best actor, yeah, and she won, Robert De yeah. Oh no, did she win for supporting or did the girl from the holdovers win? No, nobody from the holdovers won. Yeah, the girl, the the woman in the whole I saw the holdovers. It was the 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 um the heavy set woman? Yeah. Yeah, she won for supporting, I think. Yeah. Yeah, she won for supporting. But Emma Stone won. Really for Gladstone didn't win from Killers of the Flower Moon, I'm forgetting already. They always say you forget about who won, like a week later, you won't remember. Are you asking supporting actress? Emma, yeah. Stone, Emma Stone won best actress. Yes, Emma Stone. And what was Did the other one? supporting actress was Divine Joy Randall? Yes, that the, the, from the holdovers. Yeah, that's the holdovers. Oh, and Lily we, didn't win. No. And and what's her name walked her up, which I loved. I love that guy from Holdovers. He walked her up. I Paul thought, Giamatti. If, if she ever fell backwards, he'd be dead. He looked like a stamp on the floor. The size of that lady is huge. That one. I mean, I never saw a woman that big. Oh. The co-star of the movie. We're the one. Oh. Divine Joy Randolph. Yeah. An, an a, enormous woman. Um, she's amazing, amazing in the movie. She really gets to your heartstrings. She's got, I felt like the holdovers for me was really good. I felt like it was like an 80s, 90s vibe with a lot of heart and one of those movies. And I would even call it a Christmas movie because it's all filmed around the holiday. The cinematographer is beautiful. The acting's simple. The story is simple. You feel it. It's so heartfelt. And Paul Giamatti's great. The kid that they discovered, Michael, I think, Sessa, Michael Sessa, whatever his name is. Right. Um, he was great. I mean, they were all great. It's a, you should watch the movie. It's a terrific movie. So well, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to a commercial break, which includes Catherine and I. On April 13th and 14th, Paisan Khan, you gotta come, man. It's in Fairfield, New Jersey. Go on their website, buy the tickets. You're going to see every Italian. Well, maybe you don't like all of us, but some of us are going to like and be there. There's going to be a lot of talent. It's for two days. Fairfield, New Jersey. Be there. All right, we're back. I think that kid Joey Cutlets is going to be there. Yeah, I know. Yo, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy Cutlets. Tommy. Tommy. Uh, Cutlets. Yeah. He's going to be throwing cutlets. He's throwing cutlets. I, 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 I watched that whole thing and I, I just think they overplayed him too fast. Then he disappeared. It's a shame because right. he was a, a third string quarterback in my memory. Yeah, but he could come back. He's going to, he could have another shot. Oh, I know. I know, but I, I, whatever. But, you know, the mother and father are going to be heartbroken if he don't come back. They love yeah. him. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's funny. So, Catherine, let's talk about The Sopranos. So now, you, you know, you get the Bronx Tale and you're on your way. So how does that come into play? How did that work out? How'd you get what? that? Role? How'd you get the role? Sopranos? Yeah. Uh, I was really good, really, really close with Kathy Moriarty. Oh, wow. And, wow. Yeah, very close with Kathy. And um, Kathy... Uh, huh? Raging Bull. She the Raging Bull? She yeah. was the one the Raging Bull. Yeah. She's done so much, though. And she's an amazing actress. But she um, called me and she said, uh, Catherine, you got to go in for this new show. I am I just screen tested for Carmela, for the wife. It's called The Sopranos. And I remember I said, I don't sing. And she goes, no, no, it's about a family, The Sopranos. And I was like, oh. oh. Let's get on it. Tell your agent I love the pilot. You're gonna like it. Okay. I call my agent. They get me an audition. I go in and I read for Camilla. I think they were letting everybody read for Camilla, not just me, but like, or maybe me and a few people. But I read for Camilla, and they David Chase was laughing the whole time. I, I mean, I was in that room with all the producers and everybody, and I just he was just chuckling. I guess the way I played it. 
And then they called me and they said, you didn't get Camilla, but we'd like to offer you uh, the role of Charmaine Bucco. She's a real true person that, you know, that it really exists and you'd be playing her. And, um, and I, and I, of course I, I took the offer, but we did not know after we were done fil filming the pilot, David Chase came up to me and Johnny Ventimiglia, who played my husband, he came up to us and he goes, hey, listen, guys, I mean, I don't even know if the show's going to go. Oh, nobody, wants, nobody wants another mob movie or another mob okay. series. I don't even think it's going to go. But if it goes, we'd like to have you guys back. And me and Johnny were like, okay, sure, we'll come back. <laughs> and me and Johnny always talk about that. I looked at him and he looked at me and I was like, yeah, I'll come back. He's like, yeah, I'll come back. And cut to even two years later, it was just like a phenomenal phenomenon, pop culture. Oh my God. So you, you are. Dave, David Chase wrote a movie for me called The Dwarf in the Helium Hat when he was writing for the, when they used to have their, those nine, 90 minute movies on television, the Universal. So I did it. He called me to audition for The Sopranos. And, but he didn't realize I, I, was, I was making three pictures with um, Michael LaBelle and Andrew Bergman, which was strip tease I did with Demi Moore and produced it, and Armand Asante. Then I did. Um, you yeah. produced strip tease? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. I produced 16, 16 movies. Oh, but I didn't bigger know that. than that, I did any given Sunday, 38 movie stars with Pacino. Wow. But that's, that's I to, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, Johnny. But and that's you no. Know, that's what I started to do because I had all, I had boxes of money. I couldn't do nothing with it. So I formed this corporation. I was financing films with it. And you should have gave me a box. No box. kidding. No, but I was I was kidding. laundering money through the film business, and nobody figured it out. <laughs> hey, I just want to jump in here because I googled this, and I want to give these uh, people their due. Best actress for a drama was Lily Gladstone. And and best actress for comedy was Emma Stone. Oh, okay. And supporting actress was Divine Joy Randolph. I just wanted to give the, those yeah, ladies. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah. Yes, yes. I wanted didn't want to be putting out bad info. So I, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but are you still friends with Kathy Moriarty? Oh yeah, we just talked recently. Kathy's doing Paisanicon. She called me, she goes, Naduch. She's the one who gave me my nickname, Naduch, because oh, yeah. everybody calls me Naduch. And she goes, Naduch, what do you know about this Paisanicon? Should I do it? <laughs> she goes, they said, you're on, you're attached. I said, do it, yes. Oh well, We gotta get me, you and Kathy. Well, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. Kathy Moriarty and Richie Palm. I remember she was going out with Richie. Oh, I love Richie. They were my house guests in Beverly Hills when they first came to LA. I love, I love Richie. Places. I still talk to Richie. I love Richie. Richie's a doll. No. And it, then he married Raquel Welsh. I mean, he went through the oh. gap of movie stars. And this kid, he owns Pizza Palace. You're Nobody. calling him a kid? Well, he's a kid to me. He's, he's, no. No. He's what? He's 60 some years old. That's not really a kid to you. Well, I'm 20 years older than him. Oh, now, hello. That's how long I know him. Uh, man. So anyway, yeah, nobody knew that, getting back to that, nobody knew that it was going to be such, such a... Oh, no. It took unbelievable. Off. And I remember when we all first went to the um, SAG Awards, uh, we got nominated every year for SAG. Um, oh, my God, for yeah. Cast Ensemble. Cast Ensemble Plus the individual Jimmy Edie got nominated, but when we would get nominated for cast ensemble, we all traveled together from New York and we got on a Sopranos bus when we got there. It was phenomenal. It was the best time, one of the best times of my life as an actress because we were all so close. So it was just like saying, hey guys, we're all going on spring break. Right, and no, no we would just be in hotel, the hotel rooms running to each other's rooms and drinking and 
having a ball and partying. And I mean, it was phenomenal. And then the, the, the funny thing was we got to the SAG Awards at the first time. And I'll never forget this. We sat down and the table next to us um, was Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt, and all these people on this side. It was Roberto Bonalucci and all these people, right? All these big phenomenal people. And I remember they we all sat down and we still didn't realize the how big it was, even though we were there getting an award. And I remember Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt, they were they were all staring at our table. And um people were just like coming up to us, like, oh my God, I some guy, and I, I don't want to say the actor because I don't want to make them feel stupid. He goes, I'd give a piece of my pinky to be on that show. Uh, and I'm like staring at these people who I admired and couldn't believe that. I was like, what, really? And by maybe the third season, we started to really realize like it's, yeah, that, it's got a life of its own. Oh, yeah. Last, that was the last of the appointment television. Every Sunday night, you'd sit in front of the television. They don't do that, obviously. Uh, I, but, I, had, I had the un pleasant tree to meet Galdafini in Italy just before he died. He, he was staying at the, uh, I, I had an apartment there near Mascagoni Hotel. So I used to go to the Cafe Dornay in, in the hotel he was staying. So I, I saw him. I, I He knew me and I knew him being in LA. But I didn't, and he was with his son, which is even sadder. My God. Oh, oh, oh. You, know, you know what I find amazing? It's not amazing. I don't want to say amazing. Maybe it's the wrong word. Catherine is, you know, it's what, 10 years after he passed away. And when anybody talks about, you know, industry people talk about Gandolfini, they never mention his resume. They talk about the human being, how great of a person he is. And the resume is like, you know, hearsay. You know what I mean? It's like they always say he was a great guy, great this. Everybody loved him. He's generous and this and that. They never mention he mentioned he was Tony Soprano. Incredible. Yeah. I don't think you need to. Once you mention his name, it's synonymous. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And I, I've never, and I'm, and, you know, again, I've never heard any actors and actresses. Well, we're all called actors now, right? We can't say male or female. We're, are we all known we're as all actors? actors. Yes, Catherine? Right. You want to be politically correct, just say actors. That's what I'm saying. So I'm Before saying. I'm <laughs> All of these people have never said a bad word about never, him. Never, never, never. He was never, so never. generous. He paid their mortgage. They were in trouble. You can go to him about anything. He'd write a check for you. Not even online, you can't find nothing. Comments. No. no. Amazing. No, he was the most phenomenal, unbelievable, unbelievable guy. You know, he got, it's all true. He got his pay raise. He gave us all money in an envelope. He gave, he gave uh, mopeds out randomly, ordered some mopeds, came to the set, and gave them everybody a moped. He gave um, he gave us all these beautiful watches that the gold, um, I got a white platinum gold one that says on the bottom, rest in peace, because it was the end of the show. And, I, and oh, wow. he gave us all like, uh, I mean, phenomenal. And, yeah. and a phenomenal person to work with because he was always looking out for you. Anytime I had a scenes with him or anything like that, he'd always just come over and whisper in my ear something and help me to like do it even better. And like, just I mean, how, how, did, Catherine, how, did, how did you separate your friendship from the character? Because your character pretty much hated him. You know what I mean? So You know, I used to feel so bad when we would have scenes, I would say, oh, I don't want to do like I felt so bad, but I also, um, at the same time when I had that quick sex scene with him and and his dream with Artie, that was weird for me too, and it was weird for him. And he looked at me and he goes, he called me his Georgia Peach. He goes, oh, oh Georgia Peach, my Georgia Peach. I don't want to do the scene with you. I said, I know. We it was kind of like awkward at this point, but. We did it, and it's fun, you know. You could, you, you just don't even think about that. You just do it. Do you remember? Do you remember? Um, the, do you remember how you found out that he passed? We were. Yeah, I, did. I, 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 I literally was at the Grove in Los Angeles, and 
Um, wow. Well, that, just your emotions show how close you were to him. That's nice. Yeah, no, it, it was awful. Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised nobody got to him when they saw how far he was getting into that stuff. I don't know. Next. Next. Yeah, hey, moving on. Moving on. Moving yeah, on. Let's, let's circle back. That wasn't your first time working with him before The Sopranos, no? No, I did a short with him. Um... I did a short with him. We did the, we did the, yes, um, that was the first time. But then when we went on, on hiatus for the pilot, they were waiting to see if it's getting picked up. His best friend, Billy Garcia, who was a filmmaker, wrote a short for him. And I played his wife in the short. It's called A Whole New Day. Um, it's really good he's so good in it and then we worked on that when we were on on break and so that was a lot of fun to do and then hbo max bought it or cinemax bought it and then it was on the airplanes you know we could watch it on the air shorts on the airplane so that was nice um it was, it was it, i love that short i think jimmy was so good in it he plays an alcoholic but uh and he wakes up in the wrong apartment but he in our no, he wakes up in the wrong apartment, an empty apartment, hungover, and he thinks it's his apartment and I left him with everything. <laughs> so the whole time he thinks he's home, but he's not. He's in the next door apartment. When he was drunk, he went into the apartment <laughs> next door. <laughs> I love and that. Yeah, it's really, he's really good in it. It's fun. So, well, Kevin, thank you so much. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted to know, you said, um, you took your boy to the audition, but you got the part. Did your boy continue acting? No, he wasn't really an actor. I just he wasn't in it. I just used the kid and then stepped there on his girl. That a girl. I was gonna <laughs> say it's like a guy taking a dog to the park, right? You're like, come on, yeah. No, he was fine. <laughs> worked out. It worked out. It's wonderful. Well, well I want to come to Vegas. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for it's being done. on the show with us. And uh, we'll be together at Paisan Khan and uh, have a great time at the Mob Museum the following weekend. Oh, yeah, I know. So w let me ask you, you enjoyed that, right? And doing you, you enjoyed the Mob yeah, Museum? I, I, I'm the kind of guy that I'm so appreciative of people. I'm, I'm really not in this business as a normal person. I made so much money before my 20s that I did this as a golf game. I never wanted to be an actor that was out of work. That's why I asked a question Saturday night. How does it be to be an actor when you're not out of work? Because I'm so used to, you know, I've been spoiled where I made a lot of money fast and I kept it. <laughs> and you're smart to keep it. So I never, I never suffered. So when people talk about a hungry actor, I was never that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Well, you know, there's, there, 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 it's very hard, you know, a lot of my friend right now, now when I, fi I wrapped up Alto, um, Alto, I keep saying Alto, Alto Nights, I wrapped up Alto Nights February 14th of last year. Oh, wow. I, I, I haven't worked since because then we, went on, strike. we went on strike and then I got a movie and then, uh, the whole movie fell apart. I got a movie I was told you I was with Andy Garcia and George Gallo, who I love. I love he George Gallo. Midnight Run. He did uh, 29th Street. I and I was gonna play Andy Garcia's wife. That kind of it didn't fall apart. It's like hovering, he said. So then that and I haven't, you know, I haven't worked because the business is going just like, but I have a, thank God I'm on a series, The Godfather of Harlem. I play um uh Olympia Giganti, I played the Chin's wife, who was played right. by Vincent D'Onofrio. Right. And um, so I have that show up. It's going on its fourth season. They got picked up. We go back in uh, May or May it's filming. But right. now I got to wait until May to go back to like it's it's a hard business because you're uh, talking. It, about there's, a, there's a famous joke. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard about being, you know, the difference between being an actor and a large cheese pizza. A large pizza could feed a family of four. 
<laughs> That's great. Catherine, when I was in choir, that you were either a, an alto or a soprano, right? You're in both. So I wonder if your next adventure is going to have something to do with uh, music. It's funny. I, when you were saying alto, uh, alto nights, I was thinking altos and sopranos. How you funny is that? That's a good connection. Play Pavarotti. Uh -huh. Maybe if they make a movie about Pavarotti, you can play There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you're right, though, um, uh, because there's not a lot of actors that, you know, and 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 I, you know, I thank God I'm like you. I'm appreciative. You know, I I always seem to to, you know, my from the day I started, I never had to go back. I my W2s are of an actor, you know, like I make a living acting, which I think is a blessing. Oh, yeah. Because I know so many people who had even great careers bigger than mine and they they can't get arrested they can't they don't get work on it and when every time i get a job i just know that i'm lucky you know because you're right i had a you asked you, you know that you know what it is though me, me, i have an eye for, for talent you're so unique there's not like three of you or four of you in the business wow well, well, that's what i good. see in you when well, you there's no egos you know you're a normal person you know we've had people I've, I've interviewed many many people they come on and it's like it's like dude leave your ego at the door pal nobody gives a shit you know what i mean you're going right in the ground like the rest of us you know but you seem very normal one-on-one -on -one, you know what i mean oh uh, thank you and that's why i think you'll always be successful yeah. Well, you, you know what that comes from, uh, Gianni? I'm really going to throw this out there, which I find interesting. And I don't know if we have time for me to say it. Do we have five Anymore. minutes? Yeah. Of course. I think the interesting thing about you most, to me, that I can't get past, I know you tell your stories about what you did to this guy and how you did that. And you have these crazy stories that, in one lifetime, people didn't even live uh, a quarter of the things that you did. Like they'll never even know these things that you did and the, the, the everything that you've done. But I'm more interested in you and the background. And you told me you, you know, you had polio, you were in a home and the fact that your mother left you there to me, that stopped the movie right there. Pause it. That, little child to me because i'm into like the head and the you know the psychology of what makes people tick and who they it, the fact that you kept going and the fact that you're still loving and you're you're humble and you came from so much you came from a lot of light but you also from what you told me came from a lot of a lot of darkness and yeah. the dark ages let's say let's call it the dark ages for you that you even rose from the ashes to be where you are now still smiling still happy right. anybody else that any of that happened when you were a child they wouldn't be happy they would be maybe a junkie or a drug addict or a alcoholic or a killer. <laughs> then angry or bitter or like you push it aside you you know they say wipe the wipe the dust off and you kept going and that's what my connection to you is because I had a rough life too. And crazy, I told you, crazy childhood that I think that's what keeps you humble because I lost so many people so young, very young. Everybody died, mother, father, grandparents. I lost so many people that you appreciate life. And it's kind of like... um a curse and a blessing. The curse is you lose all these people, but the blessing is you appreciate oh, no. every single thing that you live in the. No, and I, oh, I no. love for, for the time and, and, and I thank you for recognizing that. And um, because you, know, it's, it's you know, those dark ages exist. No, it's, uh, but do you know that, yeah. that that's what, uh, like I just said, you know, to me, every hour of my life, I love. <laughs> I wouldn't change one thing. 
I wouldn't yeah. change anything. Perfect. Amazing. Wow. Thank you for that. And I that's beautiful. God bless you. That's really nice for you to say that. I appreciate it. Catherine, I, I, as an Italian, no, I mean it with the bottom of my heart. Catherine, as a, as a first generation Italian American, I just want to give props to you, my Italian sisters, Marissa Tomes of the world, Lorraine Broncos. Keep doing what you're doing because you make us proud, and uh, we're watching. You know what I mean? When we see you up in the screen, the big screen, the small screen, I say, I tell my kids, look, look, she's Italian. Look at her, kick her ass. Look at her. You know, God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. And thank, thank you for you. being with us. Catherine, it was so nice meeting you. I, and maybe I'll sneak on down to Las Vegas. It's a short trip and I can drive it. I would love to come down there. Go oh, down wow. next year. How long? How long of a drive? About four or five hours. Well, maybe five or six hours. Depends on how heavy a foot you've what? got. It's just not. It's an hour flight. Take a weekend. Take a well, weekend. Well, if you go, I'll buy you the ticket. Catherine, no. I've been dying to go to the Mob Museum. I've been to Vegas a million times, and I, I have not been there. I've so, got it. I would love it. It'd be a, a double reason to go there. I would love to meet you in person. Make, oh. the, make the arrangement, and I'll, I'll fly you down there. Oh, you're darling. Gianni, Gianni you got to make the call for me over there. Call, tell the mayor. I'm definitely doing it mayor. tomorrow. <laughs> tell the mayor. Get Man, some Oscar Goodwin would love you. you got to go to his steakhouse. Ah. Night. No, he's got the best. I mean, he did a great job. He's a nice guy. What's his steakhouse, Gianni? Do you know? It's in the Plaza Hotel. I think it's Oscars, it's called. Very original. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for your time. And maybe I'll take Gianni up on that. I would love to come and meet you. And I'm I want you to. You know that. Go. I know. You're sweet. Well, thank you so, so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Catherine. All right, good night. All right, All right. have a good night. Okay. Bye -bye. And to our audience, thank you for another great show, please. And as our group says, keep the cards and letters coming. What, what's your speech, Mike? Subscribe on YouTube, uh, Hollywood Godfather Podcast. Check out the website, HollywoodGodfatherPodcast.com. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell all your enemies to subscribe. And um, that's it, man. There's a ton of stuff up there, a ton of content. And what do you think, Catherine? Could I pass for Adi Buko's double or what? Yeah. Yeah, I got that a lot. I get a lot. <laughs> if we do the if we do the remake, if we do a spinoff. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm in. All right. Good night, everybody. God bless. All right. Good night. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>